Okay, in today's Raman Bakia, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we are going to start with Raman, but first we'll go with the Pasuk. So Pasuk says, um, uh, so this is Mishle 22, uh, chapters 20, uh, Psukim 26 through 27, and this is day two. So, Altahi Batoke Ekaf, Ba Orvi Mashaos. Do not be among, with or amongst handshakers. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, we can actually just uh, delete this now. Not be with handshakers, with co signers of loans. <coughs> Uh, if you don't have what to pay, why should your betting be taken from under you? Okay. Or literally, why should he take your betting? Okay. We, we said that we said that it's uh, um, active in third person. Why should he take, but then um, alter. And then some of the other translations said that it could be passive uh, when used that way. I don't know what the rule is. Okay. So we had a bunch of questions. What is the scenario here and what are the parameters of this directive? That's the major question here. Okay. And it's a question on these psukim, but it's also a question in light of the other similar psukim in Mishlei. Okay. And I didn't necessarily want to do this at the outset last time, but I think really quickly, I just want to show you the four other psukim in Mishlei that talk about handshakers. There might be more that talk about um, guarantors. Yeah, we did, one, yeah, we, yeah. Yeah, we did do one. Yeah. Yeah. So um, in, oopsies, that did not work out how I thought. Why did it jump to, uh, let's see, Mishle? Okay, yeah, so one is, the, the longest one is in Mishle 6-1. Uh, it basically tells a whole story, okay? Nice. Uh, uh, well, it's only three psukim, but Bini, my son, im arabta l'reacha, if you have become a co-signer for your friend or for your fellow, takata l'zar kapecha, um, I think this is also, you have to put the word if in there. If you have become a... Um, if you have uh, shaken hands with a stranger, no kashta You have become ensnared by the words of your mouth. Nil karta You've become trapped by the words of your mouth. Uh, and then he tells you how to like um, how to deal with it. Okay, but that's that's warning against becoming a co-signer for your fellow and shaking your hands with a stranger. Okay, so just note that right there. Yeah. So how do you get out of it? How do you get out of it? Yeah. Uh, unclear. Say zos efo bni vihinasel. Do this, my son. I don't know how to translate efo here and be saved. Kibasa bakaf reecha lech hisrapes urahav reecha. Go and um, uh, like uh, uh, make yourself um, hisrapes and rahav your friend. Okay, just do that. Yeah, I don't want to go into what translations of, 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 of that. That's too far afield. Okay, so then we had Yud Aleph Tesvav, which we did last year. Uh, in Mish- Monday Night Mishle, Raya Roa Ki Arav Zarva Sunday Tokim Bukteya. That's what we said yesterday. Uh, one who is a co-signer for a stranger will surely be broken. Raya Roa the Sone Tokim Bukteya. But one who hates handshakes will be secure. Then we have uh, seventeen eighteen, which we did last year in this year or two years ago. No, we didn't do this at all. Yeah. Seventeen. Okay. Uh, Adam Chaser Lev Tokia Kaf. Um, a person who is lacking understanding or lacking a mind. Will shake his hand. Will shake hands. Okay, um, this would have been a good campaign during the first part of COVID, right? Orev Aruba Lifnei Reehu, one who is a uh, co-signer in front of his friend. All right, and then we have our pasuk, and then we have. Oh, and that's it. Yeah. Okay. So you see, there's like a smattering of these things, and some of them have to do with strangers, and like are talking about across the board. And other ones are like less clear. Um, but this is the one, this is the only one, ours is the only one that talks about um, uh, people who do this action, like handshakers and co-signers, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, I feel like that's a clue that we should lean more heavily into the implications of that. In other words, you see that Shlomo has no problem saying don't do handshakes and don't do co-signings. So the fact that this is saying don't be among handshakers, I think is like a, uh, that's the, that's the, the, the Kiddush of the puzzle will emerge from that. Yeah. Um, I have a more general question. Yeah. Um, why is Mishle focusing on this like specific topic? It seems like, yeah. the, like, it seems like a very particular thing that like, yeah, it's bad. Right. But it's not like, like, it doesn't seem like it should be a talk to you. Right. So if we are uh, successful, then then the answer will emerge from, uh, perhaps will emerge from our idea. Yeah, okay. <laughs> that covers all ground. All of a sudden. I mean, uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I think, uh, I th- but no, I, I think I'm, I'm saying a little bit more than that. I'm saying that, like, hopefully, 
like, you know, this will shed a light on why this needs to be said in particular, you know, uh, whereas uh, like you can get initially ideas from different so and it's not going to shed light on why he takes up the topic, you know? Yeah. yeah. All right. So our questions were, so that was the main question, like what's going on here? What are the parameters of this uh, advice? And then we see that the parameters have something to do with being like with handshakers. Okay. Two, what is a handshaker in this context? And what is a cosigner? Um, what is implied by the fact that we define the entire person by the single action? Does this imply that this is a fundamental part of their personality or that they habitually do this? Do they have other qualities? All right. Uh, three, what is the bet in the first pasuk? How do we translate it? And what would it mean to be bitok e kaf or and ba or vi mashaos? Um, right. So like we're now leaning more in terms of being with them. Okay. Not being one of them. But then the question still is like, what degree of association uh, are we talking about here, right? Does it mean like being friends with people who do this? Does it mean like being in their vicinity, you know? Um, so what, what is that? For why not express this in some other way? Um, uh, like saying, don't shake hands or co-sign for loans lest you lose your betting. So now we've, we're kind of moving uh, towards an answer to this, right? Because we're saying, it's not telling you not to do this. It's telling you even more, don't be with these people. Okay, you see, I'm really trying to push this uh, mm -hmm. direction. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, another methodology point, by the way, is you know, in in this Monday, not Monday next year, in this uh, morning initially year, we definitely are in the uh, pattern of like brainstorming exploration day, then like committing to approaches and like learning the farshim day. I think sometimes I, I think like it, it could be useful to keep a very open mind in the exploratory phase of the learning, then wait for the dust to settle and then use what's left standing when the dust settles to choose what direction to go in. And you can't always get that on the same day, you know? Uh, so that's one of the advantages. The disadvantage of this year is we only have 45 minutes. The advantage is that we get a dust settling period, you know? Okay, um, uh, six, oh, sorry, five. What are the Havaminas? How many are there and what are they? Why would someone be prone to giving into this Havamina? So for example, is there a Havamina for each one? That the Havamina for 26 is, oh, I should be among handshakers and cosigners. And then the Havamina for 27 is, if I don't have what to pay, then I should somehow like do, or is there only like one piece of advice here? And, uh, and like the, uh, and you have to like figure out what the Havamina is, okay. All right, um, six, what is the relationship between the two Psukim? Is 27 providing the reason, which means that 26 only applies if you can't pay it back? Is 27 addressing the Havamina, is it something else? And then 27, uh, uh, has to do with the relationship between Mishle and, and Chumash. Granted that Shemos Chav Be'ez Chafei through Chavav talks about the deprivation of bedding when you can't pay. So then why express the same con the consequence the same way here, like in terms of taking the, the bedding away? Why not say another consequence or just leave it at you'll be poor? Or like, are we supposed to take into account all of Shemos here? Okay. Uh, was that? Yeah. That's the last thing. Yeah. That's, um, I think it's Shemos, it's about taking the as collateral. Uh, as collateral, right. But isn't that going to ultimately be the advice that it's saying here that... Uh, I, I, I was noting that it's not okay. in payment for the debt. Okay, correct. And speaking of which, let's uh, go over the fact that Isaac dug up, thanks to Rav Makbili in the Rambam. So let's just read this. We didn't know yesterday. So, Hamava es chavero aide arev. Arav, Arav, I don't know how to say Arav. it. Arav, okay. So one who lends money, and I, I, again, pardon me, I get mixed up with the words Malva and Lova all the time. So I'm gonna have to read this really slowly and repeat it a lot, okay? And if you think I'm wrong, I am, okay? So like, feel free to call me out on it. All right. Hamava es Chavero, one who lends money to his friend, Ayide Arav, through a cosigner. Afal pi shaha Arav mishubad lamalve, even though the cosigner is subjugated in debt, to the lender, okay, meaning that that that's what a cosigner is, right? He's going to have to uh, pay if the borrower can't pay. Lo yitba es ha'arev trila. The lender should not demand money from the cosigner initially. Ella tovea halove trila. First, the borrow the mm, the lender should demand from the borrower first. Okay, so that's step one. All right. Uh, let's just do the role playing here again. So if I am, if, if Ariel Len lends money to me I'll be the, I'll be the and Isaac is the cosigner. 
right? I have learned, I have learned the puzzle yet. Okay, so, yeah. <laughs> so then when Ariel wants his money, he should first come to me, yeah. okay? Even though he has the right to go to Isaac, then he should come to me first, okay? Yeah. Im lo nasan lo. If I, the borrower, don't give money to Ariel, the lender, choser etel haare venifra mimeno. Then, then Ariel can go to Isaac, the cosigner, and and demand payment from him, yeah. extract payment from him. Okay. Bame devarim amurim. When are we talking about the shein nechasim lalove? That's only when the borrower has no possessions. Okay. Aval but if the borrower has possessions, lo yiframin ha'arif klal, then the lender should not extract payment from the cosigner at all, elamin halova, uh, and should only uh, extract payment from the borrower. So in this case, if I am like dirt poor, right? Uh, that's why they call it dirt poor because you only have dirt, right? So then that's when Ariel is permitted to go to Isaac, the cosigner. But as long as I have possessions, then uh, Ariel can extract the money by seizing my possessions. Okay. <laughs> um, you said I should read this next paragraph? Yeah. Haya halove il alim alam ilim alim. That's a strong man. Yeah. Okay. So if <laughs> if the uh, if the borrower is a strong, intimidating uh, individual, the in based in ichalim lahatil miado to the point where based in doesn't even want to approach. Okay. I just give off that that uh, aura. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what was that? I think I did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it also could be like has influence. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't have something physically strong, right? It's like, yeah. like like a like a mob boss or something. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. Um, which might also be true. Uh, Test me and find out. Um, uh, oh, so so if if the <laughs> if the borrower is a uh, is is someone who's like intimidating and the base team doesn't want to approach him. Oh, sorry, and the um, yeah, yeah, right. Can't approach me to get the money. Oshlo baladin, or if I don't go, show up in court, harizen nifra min ha'arev tchila. So then, the lender is allowed to extract payment from the cosigner first, initially, right? You could just bypass collecting from uh, the borrower. The achar kach yase ha'arev din im halove, and then that will force the cosigner to go into a court case with the uh, the borrower. Okay. Oh, that's a bad situation. Im uh, yeah. If he is able to extract from his hand, then he can extract. Oh, yeshamtu oso basin aji tenla, or basin can put him into uh, uh, ostracism uh, until uh, he gives it to him. Okay, yeah, right. We're not going to read all the other halachas, right? Yeah, that, that's yeah. that we need. Yeah, yeah. So that's just staying the halachic parameters that we didn't know yesterday. Okay. Yes. Um, I actually don't want to do that. Uh, I'm. I, I'll hear any new approaches we have. Uh, I think the one that I want to develop is the approach that you started and that I pick up, picked up on also. Uh, but uh, Ari, Ari wasn't here yesterday, so he gets to like uh, <laughs> say his uh, approach. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know if it's the same or not, but sure. I I like the second because um, I'm going to start with the second half of the uh, the second puzzle yeah. because I think it's. Uh, I think there's a, a just way in lending money and, and going about deals. And when I say just, I mean more a systematic and efficient way, yeah. which causes less anxiety and stress on, on people. Yeah. Um, you know, the second half of the puzzle, it, it kind of, sorry, the second puzzle talks about how to effectively and properly loan money and the, and the uh, psychology of the borrower. Meaning, like, if he's giving away his bet and giving away something of value that he needs back, he's gonna. What, what you're doing is you, now he's gonna be more motivated to work for that and work work to pay back the loan. So you're giving him purpose, right? Okay, that's an interesting way to put it. What do you mean? I mean, if like, I mean, yeah, it's giving him purpose, but it's like I want to be able to sleep on something. Like yes, I, there's yeah, not like an he, elevated purpose, you yeah, know. Yeah, like he still wants your house back. Yeah, like he, you know, uh, I mean, true, he wants to sleep on something, but at the end, he still owes some money. Yeah, right. Right. So I mean, that that's the. Well, the well I guess I guess okay, I, I okay. So maybe I'm just giving someone purpose sounds like a positive thing. This sounds like much more like avoiding a negative. So for for the for who well that that that's I guess one of the questions that we raised uh, yesterday. Plain shot is that um, this is talking to the cosigner, right? Uh, or no? Okay. I mean, uh, well, well, sorry, maybe we have to readjust things because it's saying, okay, the way we read it yesterday, we read it yesterday as saying, don't be a cosigner, 
because why should the lender take your betting, right? That was a warning that like you as a co-signer think, oh, I'm not really getting into any trouble, right? And then at the end of the day, but, but you know, if things go south, then, then your betting is going to be taken away, right? Maybe we have to adjust it now. But, but either, either way, like, like, like giving him purpose, I don't, I don't understand your lush on. So look, okay, okay, fine, lush on. Like, for example, yeah. look both ways before crossing the street or you'll get hit by a car. That gives me purpose. I don't want to get hit by a car. That's not what we mean by purpose. But it's a consequence, you know? Avoiding okay, consequences okay, is not purpose, can, yeah. Can I just Start, talk yeah. about the first half? Yeah, sure, sure, I think yeah. it'll help because yeah. I'm contrasting it to that also. Sure. So this first half of the puzzle, I think, and it says, don't be with handshakers. I, I'm going to explain the handshakers more because the co owners I'm so little iffy on. Yeah. Handshakers, like, I think they're whole, it's, it's, it's kind of like a symptom of, of a bigger problem. For if you're hanging out with, uh, I mean, the handshakers in general, they're, they don't really, um, you know, take things, uh, you know, uh, concrete. They don't put things in a concrete way. In a concrete, like, they don't have a contract. They don't mm-hmm. have... They don't have definitive terms and conditions and and, and, and system mm-hmm. that they. It's a handshake they, deal. It's, that's it's a handshake about, deal, yeah. and like because of that, that that doesn't create a speci- a, 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 a true a, 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 a just structure for both parties, and that you know that kind of uh, you know for the borrower that's very dangerous because he never really knows you know what's going on and what to do, and 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 now the handshaker is going to now aggressively take go after money or whatever. Mm-hmm. But the point is, it's like, it's not just the specific instance. It has to be like a symptom of something else, like a lifestyle, mm-hmm. which is not good. Right. And the co-signers, and I think, I think, I don't really know exactly what's so negative about the co-signers so much. Um, so I'm a little iffy on that. Okay. But, but, but I'm using... The, the the negative trait of a handshaker, yeah. you know, in relation to the second half, the, the second positive, which is it's a positive taking his betting away because there's some interaction that's going on without any Brand unclear or, parameters. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so that is going to work out for the handshakers. I, I don't think that, I mean, do you know how, do you know enough about Tony Nitton or, or Hava <laughs> about, um, how co-signing work? I mean, I assume there has to be a signature. I don't know if we just so, say co-signing, I mean, but like I was in, a, in, in real estate, the first well, couple, right? I, I, the first couple of blocks actually the, in, in the picture he explains how how person can co-signer. Uh, so a guy who lends to his friend and then after he lends it to him, um, another person, a third party says, I will be the co-signer. Okay, or he takes him to court and then the guy agrees to be a co-signer. Or he's strangling him in the marketplace saying, give me, like in, in, uh, in, uh, in Bruce Wayne's voice. Um, and he says to him, and then a guy... Uh, uh, bystander says, like, uh, leave him, I'll be the co-signer. In uh, So saying it, apparently, right, does not make the uh, uh, co-signer obligated to anything. Even if he says, I will be, even if he, if he says, in front of Bastin, So if he uh, acquires from his hand in Kanumiado, Mama, and if he does like a, well, I think it does like a king, king, king. right? So then that seals the deal, yeah, yeah right? Okay, so uh, I'm saying so then that still works with Ariel's shot, or it, actually, it doesn't, it doesn't, right? Because because the parameter, yeah, okay, Amar Lo Bishas Matan, I guess this is wrong, because Amar Lo Bishas Matan Maos, if he said to him at the time when he's giving money. Uh, hilvahu van yarev, uh, lend him and I will be the uh, co-signer. Nishtabit ha'arev be'inot sarach kenyan. Ah, okay. So, so if the money is changing hands, even between the two parties, yeah. and you say it at the time of the at the time of the actual deal, not in the cases above where it happened afterwards. Bechin im based in asu oso arev or based in point him as an arev. Nishtabit afapi shelo kanumiado. Then he becomes a uh, indebted even if he uh, is uh, doesn't do a kenyan. Kigon chai based in rotin legabos min halove. Like if based in wants to collect from the borrower. <laughs> And he says, Since he has Hana that based in uh, trusts him, believes him, through that Hana, he subjugates himself. Okay, that sounds like a whole stuff. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, so does this work out? What I'm trying to do by reading this is seeing if, um, if 
Ariel's statement about the handshakers also applies to the the cosigners. Seems to. Seems to, right? Yeah, yeah. So I, I even though it creates definitive obligations. Yeah. I have a I have a, an interest an in, in intuition with the cosigners. Yeah. I think that someone who's a cosigner, like I know this is a guy who probably cosigns a lot because once in a while in, in time of need, I don't think it it applies so much. I mean, yeah, it's, the way it's well, the de- right. people in the public definitely sound like people who do yeah. this a lot, right? I or think, who are prone to doing a lot, even I if they think, don't. Actually. I think it's a symptom of someone who wants control and power, because you are because if you're a cosigner, you're basically giving someone the ability to do something that they didn't have before. It's they're, they're always huh. indebted to uh-huh. you. That's and, interesting. Okay. That is some that, that that's that, that's kind of egotistical. Okay. So so because because does anyone think opposite? I, I kind of thought like they were trying to make you feel secure. Yeah, right, right. So I I I can see it coming from from, it could from be, it could go right. Either. I can see it coming from two things, which is you want to create indebtedness or you want to help this guy out right. and you feel like it's no cost to you. Because that, yeah, that's yeah, right. that's typically the uh the, the and I, I think this is going to come to that also, which is the typical mistake that a cosigner makes is he doesn't treat it as an actual loan because it's not my loan, it's that guy's loan, and therefore it's not real to him that he might have to pay as if it was his loan. So I'm, I'm helping you at no cost to me, just through my words, you know. And that's why, I like that first Puskin Michelet that says it, uh, puts the emphasis on speech, saying. Uh, be uh, my son. Uh, if you have uh, co-signed for your fellow, you've shaken your hand for a stranger. You've by making the, the verbal commitment, you know, and changing hands with money, right? Uh, then you've um, you've ensnared yourself, you know. So I, I think it could come from at least two motives: a desire to help or a desire to make the guy indebted. Yeah. I'm learning the first. The first okay. Plus negative. Yeah. And then, by the way, this is where Rabbi Moskowitz's rebuke to me comes in, which is you know, not rebuke, but a uh, uh, guideline, which is, you know, it's very tempting to get too caught up in the psychology and to ignore the first level, which you should go to, which is look at the action and the consequences. You know, ideally our puzzle should not be dependent on the motive. It should be dependent on, maybe that's why you need to be told this, but the, the consequence is not dependent on the motive. Yeah. So without like introducing any psychology. Yeah. Uh, and using the second plus like, the consequences. Okay, seems to you be, have me. Yeah, um, <laughs> you have my I'm, attention. I'm yeah, <laughs> the, uh, borrowers, like uh, from the borrowers before. Yeah. Um, when you are like hanging around these um, RAs, you're going yeah. to end up having a false sense of security. Like, yeah. You're not really like in debt. Yeah. Like, that guy is. Right. So I'm not going to lose anything. Yeah. Um, second process is coming to teach you that you are okay. probably going to lose. Okay, good. So th- that's really the approach that I uh, uh, I wanted to take uh, uh, based on yesterday's uh, discussion. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. So yeah, yeah. Okay. So that, that's that's a good question. I, I think I still think that the audience is up for question. Okay. Uh, yeah. I have a slightly different. Okay. Can we explore that first? Uh, um, so I want to read the Masudas David. Okay. Um, uh, which is on the bottom right. I'm not saying that he's exactly saying this, but he is the one who says explicitly, he says, uh, in a, a fellowship, in a, uh, a, a group of friends who, uh, who, shake, who are like handshakers, for each other. So that's also interesting. Okay, I don't necessarily want to commit to Cosigning. No, I, don't want to, I don't want to commit to uh, to that exact thing that they're friends with, they're, they're cosigners for each other, but he's that's how he's taking it. Leos Arev Bechova Bishibud Mekuyan to be a, uh, a, a cosigner with a um, uh, with a legal uh, legally binding obligation that they have to fulfill. Okay, and then Baorvim is Bechavras Anashim Hanasim Arevim Al Halvas in a friendship of uh, people who are who become uh, cosigners for loans. Oh, I got it backwards, sorry. People who handshake and create obligations for each other that are legally binding, that's the first half of the first pasuk, and then uh, the first, second half of the first pasuk is people who co-sign. And then he says his favorite phrase, it's just repeating different uh, the, the same thing with different words, yeah. When it says, um, yeah. does that mean that there is already a like outstanding loan in this guy's like, Oh, that's interesting. 
Yes, that would actually fit in better with his statement that these are a uh, couple of double meal shonos. Yeah, yeah. So there's already a loan and they're agreeing to, to co-sign on, on their behalf. Yeah, okay. So that's, I, I wanted to read this just to bring in the thing of uh, where he says uh, the Hevra. Okay, so I think that that's, that's the first step. And I want to read Rabbi Yona, which I also don't necessarily want to commit to learning his shot, but uh, I think he might help us a little bit. Uh, left column, he says, Bimakumus um, Rabim, he's here al Arabus Lazar. In many places, it uh, he warns on co-signing for a stranger. Velo al arvus halvaos lavada. He's here. Ella al kola arvus. And uh, I don't know if he's still talking about other places or if he's talking about our place. And not on co-signing for loans alone. Sorry, that was a really confusing English statement. Not only for co-signing on loans, uh, but on all agreements of, uh, of, of like guarantee, guarantorship. That you should not agree to guarantee for your friend. Okay, to make a promise on his behalf to fulfill anything. Okay. Or to take the merchandise on his behalf. Um, sorry to take the merchandise and promise on uh, on its behalf that you'll pay tomorrow or the next day. So he's expanding this way beyond co-signing. He's saying it's anything where you're basically making an agreement uh, uh, that involves paying off a debt in the future. Okay, let's see where he takes this. And the reason it gives uh, to prevent a person from making such an agreement uh, of guarantee, is because of another set of psukim in earlier in Mishlei, 54, 17, 18 through 19. We'll just read this here. Uh, um, 17, 18 through 19. Uh, 18 through 19, yeah. We read that pasuk. Um, a person who lacks a mind or lacks understanding will shake hands. Or if aruba uh, so to one who um, I think it's saying so to one who makes uh, uh, makes uh, agrees to be a guarantor before his friend. Ohev pesha ohev mata, one who loves pesha. So usually pesha means iniquity. I think it's being used differently here. Um, one who loves. Let's see if Rabbi Yana says it. One who loves. Yeah. Um, what was that? Uh, Amar Rav Pesha, the Red Book. Yeah, yeah, but that's not the, uh, where he defines it, right? Um, okay, maybe he's not going to define it. Shine. Oh, I, I don't know what I'm saying. So he says, one who loves um, uh, strife, loves uh, loves Pesha, loves um, uh, like, um, how does the, the translation? So, like, Transgression. Hold on a second. Um, no, it's not. Um, I was thinking maybe like poor, like poor quality bread. Magbia pisco mavake shaver. One who raises his gate seeks breaking. Okay, let, let's see how Rabbi Yona and our pasuk explains that. The ata Yosef lahazir al arevus mashaos shizman pirunum rachok lekates shnasaim o shloshanim. Okay, so now, ooh, I have an example. Now he's adding a warning on making a, uh, a an agreement uh, to be a guarantor for a loan whose payment is very far off, two or three years down the line. Shiyish l'adam lihizaher mizos mitam acher that he should be he should guard against. Uh, um, I'm doing this for another reason, even if he agrees in his mind to pay from his own uh, money. In other words, this guy is not unwilling to pay. He is willing to pay, okay? Uh, without getting into any sort of quarrels, uh, if, the, if the borrower doesn't pay, okay, as he explains in the next passage, so let's see the explanation. Um, even if you're rich at the time of the of, of the co-signing, who knows whether your wealth will last uh, until the time of, uh, of of the payment? And if you um, cannot uh, 
pay at that time. Why should your betting be taken from you? In Roy Laadam Shiv Tak Ba'ashro, it's not proper for persons to trust in his wealth. Ukumosh Kasov, as it says, Botev Ba'ashro, who you pull, one who trusts in his wealth will fall. Vinemar, he's atev ha taif enechabov eneno. If you lift your eyes from it, then it'll it's not there anymore. Okay. So he is warning about making long-term commitments that will indebt you. Okay, I'll give an example of this. Um what? That's a mortgage. Yeah, mortgage is a good example of that. Um, someone, uh, so I'm going to give an example that's not in the realm of monetary payment uh, because that's how Urbana Yona is taking it. So someone, okay, let's see, two years ago, someone asked me to give sheer, uh, to give a big uh, sheer at the beginning of the year. Okay. And not, not for Yeshiva. Um, and it, they asked me like, uh, like a couple of days before I was going to give the shear, right. And, uh, and like, I, there's no way I could prepare in that time. So I said, I said, no. So then they said next year, they're out, they'll ask me earlier. So the next year they asked me earlier. Okay. And I said, no again. Okay. So then they said, okay, how about for next year? Okay. Like they asked me like, uh, uh, like it was basically like, like 13 months in advance. So I gave a different answer. Now I didn't know this plus, but I said, I don't know like what the future holds next month on a Wednesday, a given Wednesday. Right. I don't know at all where I'm going to be next year. So no, you know, so that was, that was the thing also of like, like there's something that is not real about, like you basically project your current status resource wise, whether it's money or time or energy into the future, you know, um, and it's just not real to you, you know, and that seems to be the way the Rubina Yona is taking it. It's just warning you. And he gets it all from that second puzzle, right? Is, is he saying like, who's to say that you're going to have wealth at that time? You should basically treat it as though you're going to be poor at that time. And then your betting is going to be have to, uh, is going to need to be taken away. And that's the thing. I think that's the, that's the parameters of the directive, which is if you're okay with having your betting taken away, then go for it, you know? Now, no one's obviously going to be okay with that, but but in terms of like taking upon yourself a debt that like the most extreme form of, of, of the debt, if you're okay with that, then you can go ahead and make the agreement uh, now. But if not, so then don't assume that you're going to have that ability to pay like, then, yeah. So can I add on another dimension? Sure, and then I want to I want to link the two and then uh, yeah. apply it to yesterday and, as, and what as we were saying today, yeah. yeah. It's saying don't hang around people who. Yeah, that's where I want to go. Yeah. Yeah, because if you hang around people who co-sign and make like handshake deals, there's a certain like break with the future that those people have. Yeah. And that's gonna rub off. On okay. Right. Okay. So that was the approach I suggested yesterday, and that, that's why I want to tie together now, which is is uh, so let's just take the elements. But just David is saying don't be in the chevra of these people, even if you don't do it. All right. And then Rubin Yona is saying that this is not limited to co-signing and um, handshaking. The only reason why those two examples are given is because they don't create debts in you now. They set you up to maybe be, have to pay off a large debt in the future, okay? And, um, and when you combine those two, you get this thing of if you hang around, and so we still have this question of who the audience is, but I wanna say right now that this applies to any audience, okay? A borrower, a potential cosigner, or even if these are your friends, you know, don't hang around people who have a distorted idea about their future security. <laughs> okay. In concrete forms. I mean, look, everyone has a distorted idea about the future security, you know, but if it's getting to the point where they're actually acting on this and taking upon themselves debts and risks, you know, that have to do with their future, that will rub off on you because as the Ramam says, back to Ramam Bikius, um, I, I know I, this might be, you know, I, you know, this is funny. The more we do Ramam Bikius, the more I become aware of most frequently quoted Ramams by me in every section. I think this might be the most frequently quoted Ramam in Hegel's Deus for me, um, uh, which is, um, Derech b'yaso shal adam ligios nimshach b'deosav v'masav acharei v'chaverav. It is human nature to be drawn in one's character traits and actions after his comrades and friends. Okay, comrades here meaning like people who you're not social friends with, but who like are your fellows. The noheg b'minhag anshe midinaso, and to behave like the people of your society. Lefikach, therefore, tzarech adam lehischaber latzadikim b'leishiv etal hachamim. 
tamid kadeshi yilman mimasehem. Therefore, a person needs to befriend tzaddikim and to sit with chachamim constantly in order to learn their action from to learn their actions. Biyisrachik min harushayim halochim b'choshech, and to distance himself from the wicked who walk in darkness kadeshi lo yilman mimasehem, so as to not learn from their actions. Who shalom omer? That's what shalom means when he says holech es chachamim yachcham v'roek silim yeroa. One who walks with the wise will become wise but one who befriends fools will be broken. And the, the shot here is not just if you learn with Chachamim, just hanging around Chachamim will make you wiser, okay? What? Sure, yeah. yeah. And as it says, tell him, happy slash praiseworthy is the man who does not walk uh, in the counsel of the wicked and doesn't stand in the uh, uh, on the path of sinners and doesn't sit in the session of uh, Leitim, you know, so so it, it, it is going to, uh, so so the, the, the takeaway here is hanging around people who act on on uh, distorted uh, uh, bit, on on a false sense of security in the future, right? Will give you a false sense of security in the future or people who take risks without really being able to do a, an accurate risk assessment, that's gonna rub off on you as well. Yeah. I think that's like the idea, yeah. yeah. So like modern day example might be like someone who like puts all their money in cryptocurrency or something like that. Yeah, yeah. that's a good example, yeah. yeah. Well, okay, you hang around people who, who are like a big crypto investor, you're gonna end up like, oh, yeah, they make a lot of money. Like, yeah, say, and, and, up. and that's actually a perfect example because even if you are not investing in crypto, hanging around people who are putting all their money in crypto is going to, like, you see. Here's the thing: you're going to see. Uh, this is uh, this brings out the idea. You're going to see that they have security in their long term, like risky investments, right? And even though you don't see them have the consequence you will like that th that security will like like waft you'll be like okay if i ever need to make a a, a decision like that then I, then then like i'll be as secure as this guy you know right and then the 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 one thing happens you know where they lose all their money that they tell you is a black swan event you know and uh, and then like and then you should take that to heart because that's this example right and that's giving you the parameters which is you know if you are there are people who invest in things like that and are totally okay losing all of uh, like a large amount of money. And what they'll say, and this is this is rational. They'll say, "I'm going into this with eyes wide open, and like I've already written this off." And what like one of the good uh, rationalizations, people not rationalization, one of the good reasons people say like, "This is my tuition." Right, like uh, you know, I'm you know, just like you pay tuition when you go to college to like get an education in whatever your field it is there is a certain like schooling involved in investing and stuff. And like, I'm willing to like write this off. People do the same thing when they learn to become poker players, right? Uh, that they will say like, okay, I'm, I'm gonna set aside like, like $5,000, right? And in order to learn how to be a poker player, I'm going to be willing to like, I'm gonna treat this money as though it's already gone. And this is my education, you know? That I think is not this problem. You know, that person does have an accurate assessment and, uh, and, it, and that's why he gives that as the example, you know? Okay, yeah, this is a good idea. So okay. Can we can we just summarize the whole idea one more time? Yeah, the whole idea is that uh, that if you if uh, that there are people who take upon themselves um, uh, uh, obligations that uh, that are long term that could put them at risk for not being able to pay, right? Or people who don't adequately assess the uh, the the the, uh, the the risk, right? And um, and even if you are not one of those people, if you hang around those people, then their, their distorted sense of risk assessment and their false sense of security will rub off on you, making you prone to making those decisions. And the, the antidote is to realize, is to treat it as though you are definitely going to experience the worst case scenario, right? right? Which is the second pasuk. Uh, uh, that's what the, pasuk, the second pasuk is going to highlight. So, so this, the, yeah, so the second, so second pasuk is telling you that if you're gonna make this loan, make this one as if you're going to not have a benefit. Exactly, as if you're as if you're gonna get the worst case scenario there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good. That's an idea. Okay. Um, uh, uh, I really want to speculate about the Derek Nister of the Meiri. The only problem is that he refers us to his explanation on Perak Vav, which is much longer, and I haven't. Yeah, I couldn't even finish reading it. 
Um, let's just see if there's any other Mufarshim who are, oh, do you, do you have another idea or that was the idea you were saying? Okay, okay good, good. All right, we're on the same page then. Um, does anyone else on the page give a uh, Derek? Oh, you know, let's look at the Malvin. Malvin is a good five minute guy, right? That if you need to be spoon fed an idea, then go to the Malvin, right? Malvin's not in the packet. Uh, Malvin Bir Indian. Okay, so he says, uh, I'll tea, oh, actually, let's see if he has a Bir Hamilos. Tokia Kaf Lamala Sumashaos Asham Rutlam Rachobos. Okay, Bashaos Archobos. He'll define it here. Ati Bakot Tokia Kaf, Huha Arev Kablan. What is uh, Kablan is another monetary term. Is that the same? It's for any other person who takes something upon himself. Okay, so someone takes upon himself uh, a guarantorship. Umosif Af Lotie Baorvin Bashaos, Shlobadir Kablanos. Oh, then it goes on even to people who. Are guarantee who are guarantors for loans, even if they don't do it as a way of kablanos. That, that, that's where I, I heard the, the thing from. Also, that, that 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 was the line. But I don't think we share proper here, right? Yeah, yeah. But but um. So 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 he's saying basically whether you do it as a formal obligation or do it like Ariel was saying, like a handshake deal, right? Where you're you there's no um uh, no uh, set parameters. Okay. Oh, short Malvin. Im in lachash l'shalim lami yikach mishkavcha mitach tacha rutlam arki halove baatmo. Uh, the borrower himself, im, what? Oh, uh, im amar le, oh, yeah, sorry, im ain lo l'shalim, asr lo likanis el beso la avot avoto. If he doesn't have the uh, ability to pay, it is asr to go into his house to uh, la avot avoto. How does the puzzle translate? That's from the puzzle. To oh, take his, his... Yeah, I think so, right? Yeah. Of all the base ha'arev, mutter, Likanis the Mishkano. Oh, right, that's the, the dirt poor case, right? So the case is when I, I'm borrowing and I'm dirt poor, and Ariel is the borrower. The Sorry, the lender. I always get it wrong. The lender. Uh, uh, the lender is not allowed to go and take my dirt or take my. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, he, he. But he can go to the uh, to the uh, Ariv. Muta Likanis the Mishkano. Kamosha Kasav Lotabo El Beso. So you, the cosigner, are worse than the lova himself. Uh, is this? Hold on. Maybe this is not the case. It sounds like he's saying that the cosigner has less less of a right. Yeah, yeah, less protection. Right, right. Yeah, it sounds like. So wait, wait. So what, what does the law about oto halachically mean? I thought he can. I thought the Ramam just said that he can seize the borrower's property, but he maybe he can't go into his dwelling. But was that? Maybe, maybe it's like maybe you have to leave him his his bed. Uh huh. Like maybe that's one of the other yeah, ones. right. That, that low sauce, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Interesting. I remember we touched on that like finisher last year. Something about yeah. The borrower himself, you can't just like break down his door. Uh huh. Um, I don't know why or anything. Yeah. Like, Oh, so this is another Oslo Avos about detail of yeah. thing where we don't know enough about this section to to but be. I, a, I, I do know that there are halachas of like if you if you did loan money out to someone, like yeah. you, you can't like remind them every day. Like there's a limit to how much. Yeah. Right. It doesn't sound like that's what he's saying here. Yeah. Though. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. Like, this is related to like like the the borrower has certain maybe has certain protections, like from like the law gives him certain protections just because. He's in a position where he has to borrow. Yeah. And like there's also the sort of psychological things. Whereas the RF has none of that. He's, right. So right. So he doesn't get those protections. Yeah. Ooh, look. Shadal says, nope, that's a different bus. <laughs> <laughs> I was, she also says like Ariel does. Koshif Lahar was last one. He wants to get more pat, but that's that's a different puzzle. Oh, right? what puzzle that? that was puzzle test Zion. Yeah. Oh, that's the next puzzle. No, it was the uh, couple like ten seconds ago. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm just. I, I just want to. Say, I, I just am very curious if there's anyone who takes this metaphorically other than the modern. Uh, I mean, other than the Eerie. Um, if not, then we'll 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 stop for today because I think we got a good idea. Um, See what I what I'm curious about. So I'll tell you. I'll, I'll give you a prediction about how the Miri is going to take it. Okay, which is that this is talking about the components of the of, of, of the self, right? Uh, and so the question is going to be who is the cosigner and who is the borrower and who is the lender within the human being. And then the question, the thing is going to be uh, like, um, ooh, this is interesting. Yeah, that, that's going to be the question about who are the parties and then what is the muscle of like entering into a debt that you can't pay, right? 
It's gonna be uh, uh, tant tantalizing. Yeah. All right. Let, let, let's think about that. I don't want to. I don't want to uh, dwell on this tomorrow. I want to start a new puzzle tomorrow. Um, but uh, you know, we'll, we'll we'll see what we can uh, if we come up with something. We'll talk about it in the discussion chat, I guess. Yeah. Okay. If you really want to do the mirroring, you can do it on Friday. Uh, 